What's up everybody and welcome to XSTEM All Access. I'm Justin Schaefer and I'm excited to be part of this virtual XSTEM series showcasing some of the coolest minds in STEM. Are you curious about careers in science, technology, engineering, and math? Have you wondered if a job in a STEM field is for you? Or maybe you have no idea what type of career to pursue and you're searching for a little inspiration. If you fall into any of these categories, or even if you're just here for fun, you've come to the right place. As your guest host for this episode, I'm so excited to chat with Technical Sergeant Terika Kluis. She's a U.S. Air Force data scientist, and I'm going to ask Terika all the questions you'd like to know about her job, like what inspires her, what it's like to be a data scientist, and how her work impacts all of us. Make sure you subscribe in the YouTube description below and follow us on social media to get XSTEM updates. New episodes will be released all year, and you won't want to miss a single one. Scan this code to access resources from today's program, including NGSS and CASEL aligned lesson plans and worksheets, along with other free STEM resources from today's speaker, our partners, and more. With your parents' permission, tell us how you were inspired today by tagging us at USA Science Fest using the hashtag XSTEM and me at Mr. Fascinate. This free STEM program is brought to you by the USA Science and Engineering Festival. The mission of the USA Science and Engineering Festival is to inspire the next generation about careers in STEM. You can check out their other free programs and events for teachers and students at usasciencefestival.org. Before we begin, please join me in thanking our partners, the U.S. Air Force, the U.S. Space Force, and the Discovery Channel for making this XSTEM series possible. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. My name is Justin Schaefer, but the kids call me Mr. Fascinate. I'm a science TV show host and producer, and I travel all over the world showing people how cool STEM careers can be. I think you're going to learn a lot about how cool STEM careers are today, and I hope you have a bunch of fun with us. I hope you're as excited as I am to meet today's speaker. Technical Sergeant Terika Kluis is a data scientist for the United States Air Force. She designs innovative software systems to help the Air Force efficiently manage, store, and process large-scale data. In her role, she explores ways to apply algorithms to big data so analysts can provide more robust information to the Joint Chiefs of Staff at a much faster rate. To give you an idea of just how fast, a task that once put, took four analysts several months to complete now takes a computer program less than one minute. I can't wait to learn more. Please join me in welcoming Technical Sergeant Terika Kluis. Terika, let's jump into our questions because I know the audience is excited to hear from you. You're a technical sergeant in the U.S. Air Force, but specifically, you're part of the Joint Chiefs of Staff team as the ISR data scientist. Tell us about this organization within the Air Force, its mission, and what inspired you to become part of it. Hi, Justin. I'm excited to be here. So the Joint Staff assists the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in accomplishing his responsibilities for the operation and integration of an efficient force of land, air, naval, and space forces. I wanted to be a part of this team because I worked with um, the Air Force before when I was deployed and I wanted to uh, find a more efficient way to comb through our large data sets to find out how we can best give those answers to the Joint Chief Whenever he asked us, we were originally using Excel spreadsheets to comb through thousands and thousands of uh, lines of data to find the information that we needed. I knew there was a much easier way to do that, so I wanted to be part of the team to help come up with solutions for us to find a way to do our job more efficiently. I can only imagine how large those Excel spreadsheets must have been. For me, role models were a super important component of my personal career journey. I had a bunch of opportunities through scientists, engineers, and educators to actually catapult myself into my career field. Did you have any role models, family members, or childhood experiences that influenced your career choice? I did have um, role models um, and a couple of experiences in my childhood that um, really motivated me to uh, join the military, actually. Funny story, I originally wanted to be a dentist. I went to college and I majored in biology, and um, I ha also happened to be the youngest of six girls in my family. All of my sisters attended college, and two of my sisters went on to become physicians. After I saw what they went through to become a physician, I decided that I kind of wanted to make a bigger impact on my community, and so I wanted to join the Air Force and get an opportunity to travel the world while learning a job that I can apply to uh, something that I really enjoy. 
You know, that's really interesting that you originally set off to become a dentist. That's a great reminder to all of us that it's always okay to change your path along the way, especially when that means finding a career you're truly passionate about. All this talk about data scientists has the tech nerd in me wondering, what does a typical workday look like for you? As a data science on a typical workday, for me, I normally arrive at work around 7 a.m. and I meet with my team of developers so we try to make sure that we communicate very well so we can create the best products for our leadership. I spend the majority of my day coding and writing scripts in Python to automate the process of going through big data sets and pulling out the data that we're looking for. The part of my job that I love the most is the uh, problem solving. Um, computer programmers and data analysts have to work really um, close together and we have to find creative solutions to create and find those answers that our leadership is asking for. Wow, coding, writing scripts in Python, and working with big data sets. I love the idea of using innovative technology as a creative solution to solve problems. Plus, the knowledge and skills you've gained in the U.S. Air Force also translate to STEM jobs in the private sector. Technical Sergeant Clewis, how does the work you and others do at the Pentagon as an ISR data scientist impact the general public? So the Department of Defense is headquartered at the Pentagon. Our mission here is to provide the military uh, forces and equipment that's needed to deter war and ensure the safety of our nation. When you go throughout your daily lives, just know that we are there providing information and data to our Chief of Staff and the Chairman of Joint Chiefs of Staff so he can manage the um, $750 billion budget in order to properly allocate our uh, airborne assets all over the world. That way, um, he is keeping members of our society safe by uh, making sure that we're properly and efficiently using our airborne assets to do what we've uh, paid for them to do. I can't think of a bigger impact than keeping our country safe. Thank you to you and your team for the important work that you do. Speaking of your team, what other types of STEM professionals do you interact with or work alongside as a part of your job? In my previous jobs and currently in the job that I'm working now, I've had the pleasure of working with um, chemists, nuclear scientists, uh, mathematicians, computer scientists, and engineers. That's the best part of what I do is I get to collaborate with people of all different skill sets. STEM is definitely a team sport. I mean, chemists, nuclear scientists, mathematicians, computer scientists, and engineers all collaborating for a common goal. That is cool. Most people may not realize these high-tech and engineering STEM positions exist within the U.S. military. We all encounter some challenges along our career journey. Tell us about any obstacles and roadblocks you've encountered and how you overcome them. Also, how did these challenges influence the professional you are today? So yes, I've experienced obstacles, not so much roadblocks. The first obstacle was learning how to code. Um, I taught myself how to code in Python. I was able to also take some courses to learn a little bit of CSS, HTML, and JavaScript in order to build websites. Coding is not easy, but it's also not impossible. So that was one thing that I had to overcome, is to learn how to get better and better at my coding skills. Uh, there's so many courses that I've taken on Udemy and a lot of free courses online to help me do that. Um, another thing that I've faced is being the only woman in the work center. Um, I'm in a very small career field and I'm one of very few women in my career field. And so um, a lot of times I tend to be a little bit nervous about getting the job done and just like showing people that I know what I'm doing. So I enlisted the help of a mentor to help me to get better, to build my leadership skills, and to just learn how to have confidence in the fact that I can do my job and I can do a great job at it. So um, those are a couple of things that I've had to overcome in my career field. I couldn't agree more on how important mentors are. To all the students out there, if you're interested in a career path but feel like you don't quite fit in, go find yourself a mentor or role model that you can relate to. And role models can come from many places. They might be a friend or family member, a teacher, someone inspirational you see on TV or on the internet, or even a science communicator like me. There is a place for everyone in STEM. Technical Sergeant Clueless, tell us something about your job that might surprise people. Okay, I'll let, you on in, I'll let you in on a little secret. Um, my career field is comprised of almost 500 people, 
out of those people, there are only about 15 of us who are women. So as you can imagine, we're looking for women to bring your skill set to the career field and show us what you got. We could definitely use your help. We definitely have a lot of work to do to break the gender gap in technology and engineering careers. I'm glad you're here to share your personal story and inspire more girls to follow in your footsteps. If you're interested in coding, maybe data science is a career you should consider. Speaking of your career in the Air Force, you must have had the opportunity to travel to many interesting places. What is the farthest place you travel for work or for fun? I have been to Balad and to uh, Balad in Iraq, and I've been to Qatar for work. Uh, for fun, I've had the opportunity to travel all over Europe. My favorite was a trip to Rome for Christmas one year. I also enjoyed Venice. I've seen uh, Mallorca, Spain. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities to see the world. You've really visited some faraway places. I heard that in addition to your role at the Air Force, you're also an artist. Tell us a little bit more about this. Yes, in addition to my regular job, I also paint in my free time. It's a hobby that I've been doing since about the second grade, and I truly, truly enjoy it. It helps me blow off some steam at the end of a hard day, and also just gives me an opportunity just to be as creative as I like. I have a picture here that I painted of my daughter. Isn't she cute? <laughs> I also have a picture of my grandfather. I love to paint pictures of people who really mean a lot to me, and um, it's just uh, something that I keep in my private collection. It's great to have a creative outlet outside of your work that lets you express yourself, release stress, and just have fun. If you think you'll have to leave your creative side behind to be a data scientist or an engineer, think again. For our last question, can you give the students one takeaway thought to leave with? So Katherine Johnson is someone who means a lot to me. Uh, it really struck me to hear her story about how she overcame the obstacles that she faced as a mathematician at NASA. You probably heard of Katherine Johnson from the movie Hidden Figures. I also keep a uh, Katherine Johnson Barbie doll on my desk because it always reminds me of uh, some of the things that she said that encouraged me uh, throughout my career. One of the quotes that I'd like to share with you from her um, is where she says, take all the courses in your curriculum, do the research, ask questions, find someone who's currently doing what you're interested in doing, be curious. That is something that I would encourage each and every one of you to do, is continue to be curious, continue to ask those questions, because that's going to help you grow and learn as much as you possibly can to help innovate and push us farther in our knowledge and where we need to be in the future. Thank you so much, Justin. It's been a pleasure being here. And to all those students out there who are tuning in, I appreciate you for watching, and I can't wait to see some of the cool stuff that you're going to be up to here in the next few years. Aim high. Bye. Katherine Johnson is someone I very much admire as well. I couldn't think of a better way to end our talk today than with her inspiring words. Thank you, Technical Sergeant Clewis. I enjoy chatting with you and hearing about your work to solve problems with data science and helping us understand that a very big part of what our military does to keep us safe is done by non-combat professionals like data scientists, engineers, and more. Thank you for your service. Your job as a data scientist truly impacts all of us. Speaking of cool jobs in the Air Force, let's watch this brief video to see some more.
Make sure you check out the Air Force and Space Force online and follow them on social media to keep up with all the amazing things they are doing. Thank you again to the United States Air Force, the United States Space Force, and the Discovery Channel for making this XSTEM All Access series possible. And thank you for tuning in today. Don't forget to subscribe in the YouTube description below and follow us on social media to get XTEM updates about new episodes. You won't want to miss any of them. Plus, you'll get access to fun weekly content for students and teachers, such as STEM trivia for students, classroom tips for teachers, and so much more. Scan this code to access resources from today's program, including NGSS and Castle Align lesson plans and worksheets along with other free STEM resources from today's speakers, our partners, and more. With your parents' permission, tell us about how you were inspired today by tagging us at USA Science Fest using hashtag XSTEM and me at Mr. Fascinate. And keep up with me through my website and my social media. I hope you've enjoyed today's program. This episode, along with the entire series, is available on demand at no cost. Check them out at usasciencefestival.org. I had a blast being your host today, but don't sign off just yet. You'll want to stick around through the end of this video for a fun trivia game that you can do in the classroom or at home. Have fun! Thank you.